and thank you for, for, for joining us for uh, Open Door Stories. Today I'm with, with Bob. He's one of our elders here at Open Door Church, and I'm really excited about hearing some of your story. There's pieces of, of, uh, of your, your history that I don't know, and there's, I understand that you have a golf story that you like to tell. So the, the goal of this time is just for us to get to know each other, for people to get to know you, and it's, it's really fascinating what we hear and I, there, every time we've done this I've had people come by way going I didn't know that about them so I'm looking forward to what they're going to say about I've that. enjoyed the other two that I've seen and you have <laughs> yeah. yeah so first of all introduce yourself a little bit you know um, how many kids do you have and what you know, just a little bit of biographical information yeah. to give you a little bit of sense I'm Bob Pitzer my wife is Terry uh, we've been married for 42 years almost and uh and I guess it is 42 years. And, uh, 42 years. We have three children um, who are um, in between 30 and 40 years of age and, yeah. and, uh, and one dog. And, uh, <laughs> and a grandchild. And, yeah, a grandchild who is very, very active and, and occupies two days a week of our time. And, uh, and uh, so Will is uh, now, he'll turn three in the end of May. Is he so already three? He's already three, and, and he looks like a five-year-old. He's wow. A, he's, a, he's a big boy, and he's very active. Yeah. And boy, does he love baseball. Because <laughs> <laughs> his dad likes baseball. His, his dad is a... That's right. Right. Are you into baseball? Watching it. Just watching it, yeah. <laughs> now, you grew up, you didn't grow up in Oregon, I don't think. I did you? not. I was I was born in Chicago. Um, Chicago. My dad was in the Navy at the time, though, and, okay. and so we moved probably a half a dozen times before I was two. Oh, wow. Before but then you really even remember. We settled in suburban Cleveland, Ohio, in a, okay. a, a suburb called Bay Village, and lived there until I was 12. And okay. uh, at age 12, my family up and moved to... Uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, okay. Dad took a new job, and, and uh, so we lived in Menlo Park, California, until uh, I graduated high school. And oh, then, so from 12 to high school, at the end of high school, so about six years or yeah, so? Yeah, so when I was, uh, when I was uh, out of high school, I went down to, to uh, UCLA for college, and, and uh, four years later, um, came back up to the Bay Area and worked, uh, worked in a job at a factory for... Uh, for three years, and mm -hmm. and then came up to Oregon after that. Now, what did you go to school for? I went to school to I wanted to go to medical school. Oh, but uh, but I didn't uh, didn't hack the chemistry and oh, uh, chemistry. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> you know the the inorganic chemistry I handled but e organic easily, chemistry. but I got into uh, organic chem chemistry and some of the things beyond that, and I yeah. didn't. I, I got through it, but I didn't have the the grade point average that I would need yeah. to be considered. So. And so, what did, did what did you go to school for? Well, I, I got a eventually got a, a degree in history. I did the, too. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. And what the, did you specialize in? What what? Uh... In in the uh, the history of three different cultures: the United States, the Soviet Union, and China, and and the 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 three part play and, between them. And, and this was like about 72 or so? I, I started school in 68 and graduated in 72. Wow. At UCLA. Yep. All right. So you're a Bruin. Yep. Do you, do you root for the Bruins? I do. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, unashamedly. <laughs> <laughs> so you were there for like when uh, Bill Wal Walton was there. and Yeah. L Lou Alcender or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a senior when I was a freshman. So I saw him play. Oh my! And then when I was a senior, Bill Walton was a freshman, and I saw him play. And and uh, they lost two games in the uh, whole time probably. in in the four years I was there. Yeah, they were incredible. Yeah, they right had an then. eighty-eight game win streak. They won four NCAA titles while I was there. Was, wow! Yeah, they were they were the place for was basketball. A, yeah. Not no longer. <laughs> no longer. No. No. Okay. All right. So you went. And then you you went. Didn't you work for like Fred Meyer? And who did you work for? Well, I worked for National Semiconductor when I came out of college, but then I uh, um, I uh, worked with my dad briefly um, remodeling houses and selling them. Oh. And then uh, and then I came up to Oregon and uh, and uh, went to work in a in a stereo store, mm -hmm. selling stereo components. And uh, two of the other guys that I that I knew in that stereo business. Um, and I got together and started a car stereo store called Hear No Evil, and that was in uh, no in Eugene, Oregon. And uh, you started that store? Yep. <laughs> I've been to those stores. You have, huh? Yeah, we had uh, two stores: one in Springfield, one in in Eugene, 
and then uh, and then <coughs> excuse me we opened the store in Salem yeah that's the one I've been to is mm-hmm. the Salem one yep that's the one surviving store the other two didn't uh, really you did that mm-hmm. okay okay and, um, then, and do you, did you finish up there? Or did you leave that and go do something else? I, I left that and uh, I wanted to do the electronics electronics kind of business, but on a larger scale. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I got a hold of Fred Meyer and I, uh, I sent him a resume and said, I'd like to work for you in, in your electronics buying office. Excuse me. Yeah, that's why we have water. I'll take a little sip too. So we'll do it together. How's that? And they uh, they told me that they'd be happy to have me, but uh, but that everybody starts in the stores. And uh, so I worked in the stores for a year and a half, and and uh, hmm. then I got a phone call one day and said, "We've got an opening. Come up and talk to us." And huh. and so I was uh, an assistant buyer for about three months, and then became a buyer, and and uh, and was a buyer for fourteen years for Fred Meyer. Wow. Now where in all of and then you retired from Fred Meyer, right? I, I left Fred Meyer. I was recruited away by by a company called Shopco. And uh, they've got stores in this area also, but they're primarily in the northern Midwest. Okay. And, uh, now, where did you meet Terry in the middle of this? Was it at school? It was working a Hear No Evil store in in uh, yeah in Eugene, and uh, Terry was a student at the University of Oregon. And, oh, okay. <clears throat> and summer was coming, and she wanted to drive home to uh, visit her mama. Yeah. And uh, she needed a car stereo. And so she came in. And what was this, mid-70s or so? It was 1978. Wow. Okay. And this cute young girl came in, and you were smitten. I, it was love at first sight for me. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hadn't married. I was 29 years old, and, and, uh, and I hadn't been serious about a girl, and, and I was too busy working. And, yeah. And Terry came in, and I was I was derailed. <laughs> <laughs> Women can do that, can't they? They can just yep. turn your world upside down, and she definitely. So did. we dated for a couple of years and got married in uh, in the uh, in March of 1980. Oh wow! Yeah. And, uh, well, it'll be interesting to hear her side of the story. Yeah. Because I'll eventually <laughs> interview her. Okay. <laughs> all right. And um, okay, so. What kind of things that you guys like to do? I know she loves to do death marches. That's what you call them. So camping. She, she and likes all camping that. and hiking, and I, and, I, and you I do too. enjoy that too. And my lifelong hobby has been playing golf, but I could not get Terry to play golf. <laughs> the, Does she play golf at all? I bought her clubs. I, I invited her and and uh, told her I'd get her lessons, and and uh, and she just didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. Well, finally last year. Just last year. Some of our na- neighbor ladies were playing in a ladies' golf league where they just played nine holes on a short course. And, yeah. And Terry said, I can do that. And, yeah. Uh, and so she uh, she took up the game of golf. And, and uh, so we play together. We try to play on Mondays together and just play nine holes. Yay. And, yeah. So. You've been wanting this for <laughs> decades. Yeah. And you finally got her to play. Yeah. All right. I'm at the doctor about that. And... Uh, you know, God blesses us in many ways, but there was there was one time when I was working at Fred Meyer, and uh, the buyer I was working for then as well. I was still an assistant buyer. Um, he had he had purchased a ticket to play in in the Fred Meyer Employee Golf Tournament. I remember the story. I want I want to hear it again. And uh, and a couple of weeks before um, the tournament was to play. Um, he got an appointment where he had to be out of town the day of the tournament. And mm-hmm. so he said, you play golf? And I said, yep. He said, here's your ticket. And and because the ticket was like 50 bucks, and I wouldn't have been able to afford that at that time. Yeah, because you, you were pretty, you know, paycheck to paycheck at that point. Uh, we used to say we didn't have two nickels to rub together. It was, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I went and played in that tournament, and um, we were playing at Glendiver East on the east okay. side of, yeah, I know uh, that golf course, of yeah. Gleason, I think. And, mm-hmm. and uh and on the ninth hole, it's an uphill par three, mm-hmm. and uh, and they had a, a a booth at the bottom down on the tee said, and if you get a hole in one, you win this car. And so I I figured it was about a six iron shot, but it was uphill, so I pulled out my five iron and smacked it in the hole, <laughs> <laughs> and got a hole in one, and got my photo taken with Fred Bear. <laughs> oh my gosh! And, yeah. uh, and then you came home. No. And, uh, I didn't call. I, I called Terry and said have, they had a dinner after the thing. I yeah, said, yeah. You know, get down here because God's been good to us. <laughs> Did you tell her at that point that you had won the car? Yep. 
And, and uh, didn't you guys like have a, like not have a car or it just broke down? Or? We had we had one car that we had taken about six weeks before to the dump, and uh, or to the to the you know salvage yard because um, it was dead. And the other one we had was a 1973 Beetle that we still had, and, mm-hmm. and uh, but we had three kids and and the two of us in a in a Beetle, and it was it was yeah. full. It was full. But uh, but we won a car, and uh, the car didn't suit us. But we sold it and, and bought a car that did suit us. And, and uh, God's been so good to you guys. Yeah, it was year. good. And uh, so even the fact that you're even here because you had cancer at one point. I did. I did. Um, when I when I was in college, I thought it was a good idea to start smoking cigarettes, and and so <laughs> I did. And I, I I smoked cigarettes all until the time when we started having babies, and then I gave them up. Okay. Because I didn't want to pass that on. So really, only about. What fifteen years, maybe? It was twelve, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but anyhow, then while we were living in the Midwest, because um, we left Fred Meyer for a job in the Midwest, um, I got the flu one spring, and and a big lump popped out on under my uh, under my chin. It looked like I had the mumps. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went to the doctor, and and the flu went away, but the lump didn't. And and uh, so he said, well, let's just check this out. But he said, one way or the other, we got to take it out. And mm-hmm. so they took the lump out and, and sent it off to to uh, the lab. And, and uh, I went home for a couple of weeks and they came back to get the staples taken out. And uh, and uh, they said, well, we have news for you. <laughs> and uh, they said I had a uh, uh, metastatic carcinoma. Um, and the metastatic word Mm-hmm. registered as, as uh, and I said, do you mean that's spread from somewhere else? And he said, yep. And uh, so I knew that I had a cancer that uh, that ended up in the lymph nodes under my chin that didn't come from there. And uh, so I went home and worried and yeah. turned it over to the Lord. And and uh, and they, uh, they, they discovered that the principal the primary tumor was my right tonsil so it was resulting well, at of least smoking it's close. yeah it was smoking and they uh, they took the tonsil out they they biopsied it first off stuck a needle and it pulled some cells out and yep okay. it's it's cancerous and uh, and then they uh, took me into surgery and they took out the the tonsil and all the lymph nodes down here and sent them off to the lab and sent me home for 2 weeks and I came back took the staples out and the doctor's eyes were this big. <laughs> oh my goodness! He said, uh, "I've done 250 of these operations a year for the last 10 years. Years came back, even things that were cancerous before. There was not a trace of cancer in it. Because of prayer. Because of prayer. Because I'd, I'd gone to the uh, to the church we went to, and I I uh, asked the pastor if he was familiar with the Book of James, and he said, "Yeah." And I said, "You know the healing portions of it?" And I said, "Yeah." I said. Could you get the elders together and anoint me and pray over me um, to defeat this cancer? And he did. And that's the end of that and story. You're <laughs> and so that was uh, the uh, the cancer and the surgery were in 2003. So it's almost 20 years clear now, and and uh, and that's... no return of the cancer. Now. You grew up Catholic, I seem to recall. Yes. And then in, in, in the process of your life with Terry, you became not Catholic. Well, <laughs> Protestant. It, it, it happened prior to meeting Terry. <laughs> oh, it did? Yeah. When I was... Uh, so tell us the story then. I well, thought it was Terry getting you to go to a, a, a church and it, all that. But. It was. No, I mean, my, my walking away from Catholicism happened before that. Oh, okay. Because okay. that, that happened as soon as I went to college because... Uh, because Catholicism wasn't suiting me very well, and uh, and so I went to uh, to college and and didn't spend much of the time thinking about Jesus at all, and mm-hmm. graduated college and started you working. You were an intellectual. Yeah, I was, and finally when I met Terry, um, she was a subst- She was teaching school, and uh, and she, when she was pregnant with our second child. Um, she got a substitute to take her classes for her, and and she met with the substitute for coffee, and the substitute shared a tract with her, and and she was gone. <laughs> she, uh, she she wasn't a believer when you were met when you met. No, I didn't know that. No. Okay, no. I got to talk about that with her. I'm li- making a whole list of things to talk to her. Okay, <laughs> so she came to faith, and it was about ten years after that I did, um, wow. and uh, she and her uh, and her 
church friends were praying for me. She was in small groups. I used yeah. to come. I used to come to the potlucks. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, free food. Yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't that I didn't know that there was a God. I mean, that was not a problem. The the Catholic Church teaches you that God exists and you should reverence Him and mm-hmm. and. Uh, and morals and yeah, morals and all of that. But then they bring in praying to saints and bowing to Mary and doing yeah, all of that kind no. of stuff. And so there's there's stuff that that doesn't make sense. But but finally, um, you know, C.S. Lewis talked about the Hound of Heaven, <laughs> and the Hound of Heaven I think chased me down in yeah. in, in the person of my wife, and and uh, and so she was whispering in my ear quite a bit, and and uh, and then her friends were praying for me, and. So when we started having kids, we started going back to church, but we started going back to the Catholic church. Oh. And uh, and she wouldn't have it after two or three times, and she went to a church you interned at. Right, a Baptist church. Yeah, a Baptist yeah. church. And uh, and they had a wana for the kids and mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff. And and, uh, and I think the Lord shut my eyes to, to the Catholic church because uh, – I'd come out of there after having listened to a sermon and not know what the guy was talking about. And uh, mm-hmm. and that happened maybe three or four times in a row. And I said, can I come to your church? And she said, yeah. And uh, shortly after that, Rick Elzingo, who's the pastor there, came mm-hmm. over and, and worked through a, suff- a couple of issues with me. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Yeah. Well, here's what the Bible says about it. And here's what the he Bible says. You just answered your questions. Yeah, I know. You had intellectual issues. Well, I, I did. And, and, uh, and the... The beliefs that I had just totally fell to dust with what he was reading from the Bible. So I became yeah. a, a student of the Bible at that point in time and gave my life to Jesus and was baptized and and uh, and have been uh, have been reading in His Word and praying to Him ever since. And, now, you know, I you know, for all of these things, I Facebook stalk people, and I Facebook stalked you, and it's everywhere. You I mean you are out loud living your faith. Uh-huh. Every day, you, you you're, you're encouraging people to put in, believe in Jesus, and mm-hmm. it's you know it's God really must have really just transformed your life. He did, he did. It was a big change. Yeah, cleaned up my mouth right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you swear like a slayer before? A little bit. Yeah, I was I was pretty loose with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh okay. well. But you know, I mean, it's interesting is that the people at, at this church, we only know you as that. Mm-hmm. But that was only like what fifteen years ago. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh man, when were we going to church there? It was when I just started at Fred Meyer. So no, that was that was in the early eighties. Early eighties. Okay, yeah. so it has been a while. Yeah, but it is interesting. So that we don't. I, I don't know what you were like beforehand. Yeah. I see some of your old photos. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, he wore a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when I graduated college. I had a big bushy beard too. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, beards are in now. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, what kind of things bring you joy in your life? Oh, new new grandbabies. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. We waited and waited and waited for one of our kids to to have him, and and, uh, and Amy had uh, she's our middle daughter, and she had Will. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were being patient, but... You wanted a baby. Well, we were doing a bit of lobbying with the kids, too. And, and two of ours aren't going to have kids. They, they say, Oh, they're not? Yeah. And so Amy got one. one. We got one, at least. Maybe there'll be another one one of these yeah. days. <laughs> and, and he, you know, you, you know, I remember when, when he was first born, you guys were just the most ecstatic grandparents. Well, we are. We're head over heels. <laughs> yeah, they just wrap their little fingers around your heart, and yeah. He calls me Pa. Does he call you Pa? <laughs> what does he call Harry? Oma. Oma. Or Om for short. Om. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you guys, and yet for a while you were seeing them. You were taking care of them five days a week. We right? were, and then they found a uh, to our consternation, they found a a, a daycare. They call it a preschool, but. For a two-year-old, yeah. it's a daycare. It's it's child care. Yeah, and uh, and they popped them in that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and so we just take it them Thursday and Friday. But we're happy for that. Yeah, because it was tiring. It is tiring. Yeah, those little <laughs> ones can move. They, he's, he is active from the time he gets out of bed in the morning. Yeah, he takes about an hour and a half nap, and then he's active again until seven or eight yeah. o'clock when he goes to bed. 
And then, um, and then you go camping. We've talked a little bit about that. Yeah. You have this special place that you love. Where is it? Just outside of Eugene? Yep. It's down on uh, Highway 58 that goes from south of Eugene over to Klamath Falls. Okay. Yeah. And what you like about it is there's nothing there, right? Yeah. It's, it's Blue Pool Campground. And it's about uh, 10 or 11 miles past Oak Ridge on Highway 58. And it's gorgeous. It's on Salt Creek, which is a, a strong creek at that point in time mm-hmm. and, and it's real noisy and uh, and because uh, you like base you like you don't like you don't want to do an rv none of that you want tents yeah we go tent capping but but uh, at places that uh, that allow us to drive our tent in with a car <laughs> so oh. it's, it's sort of car camping but we don't sleep in the car okay so you have one of those things that, that pops up nope we just open the trunk, put the tent and our sleeping bags and all that stuff in the trunk, our coolers and food oh, gotcha. and lanterns and There you go. So you don't put mosquito up an repellent. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I d I I want to do R V camping. I'm I'm soft. Yeah. When I was younger I'd do uh you know, hiking. I along like the uh, the uh, the the cascade the, the the cascade crest trail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, OTC. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and then you know, climb mountains and all that sort of stuff. But I'm like, getting old, and I'm like, yep, no thanks. Yep, <laughs> no, I like hiking, but you know, four or five miles each way is kind of my limit, and beyond that, it gets yeah, tough. That gets tiring. <laughs> that gets tiring. But Terry likes to walk walk a long way. Yeah, so. we've seen some beautiful places though. Oh, on, on those stuff walks. that most people don't see. Yeah. So, now, so you like that, and then you know. I love coffee, and you love coffee. I like coffee. Yeah, and then you also make wine. I do. How long have you been making wine? I started. Um, I started making beer because you couldn't buy a good beer back, uh, you know, fifteen years ago. Um, there was <laughs> especially not out of the was, outside of the Northwest. There was Coors Light, and and uh, no, the the micro beer thing hadn't even started then back then. Um, but uh, but finally the the. The micro business started up in uh, in this area, and I started tasting some good beers, and then I tried to make ones as good as that, and I couldn't, so I gave that up. And, and uh, yeah, and uh, but the place where I bought my materials for making beer, um, every autumn they had uh, they had wine grapes available. And I mm. said, "Talk to me," <laughs> and the, the rest is history. The first year I got uh, got enough to make about two cases of wine, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and the next year, next year I got enough to make about ten cases of wine, and. <laughs> And, and it's a, it's a, man, you really are into this. You won awards over it mm-hmm. and it's, you, you're constantly doing stuff with that. Well, no, it's. Well, not literally constantly, but you may be regularly. You may be busy about 10 or 12 days of the year. Oh, okay. Um, when you're making wine. It's a lot of waiting around. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but I get the grapes and I, I ferment them and I press them and the juice goes into jugs and, and, uh, and then just every once in a while, a, you know, a bunch of crud comes on the bottom of the, the you, jug that it's in, and so I I siphon the the juice off of the crud and throw the crud away, and and uh, there you go. And uh, it's it's mostly it stays in those big jars for about two years, but I, but I change to a clean jar five or six times during that there period of time. So there's, there's a couple of you know when I'm racking, um, it's pretty much an all day deal to get it done, but that's only. Only about 10. You only do it a little bit. I think it's like six times or seven times in the life of that vintage. And, and I, keep oh, it, I keep it in the big jars for, for two years and then bottle it into smaller yeah. bottles. And, and What's something you've learned that you've gotten better at? So from the time you started and now you do something different because you, you realize this is better. Yeah. What, what is something? Well, in the winemaking process, yeah, yeah you need to, to learn to control the acidity of the wine. And mm-hmm. you can uh, sometimes the, the grapes are, are lacking in acid, and sometimes they have so much. So when you so, started, you weren't doing that? And it, I was just making it au natural. <laughs> yeah, and now you're uh, tweaking it a little bit. I do a little bit of chemistry with it, yeah. Yeah, and it's for you, it's just a science experiment, isn't it? Oh, no, it's it's just a joy. of It's a hobby for me. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, I don't treat it too seriously, but... but uh. Do you ever have people wonder, which I'm wondering if there'd be people like Christians making wine? You know, do you ever have people question you on on that whole topic about... I haven't, but I figured someday that they might. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, What's your answer? Well, um, I think wine, like other things, can be abused. Mm-hmm. Um, I try not to abuse it. 
I have abused it in the past, um, but I I, I but try you know not the to. Line. Yeah, I know I, I know uh, that I can have a glass or two, and and uh, and I probably shouldn't have the third one, and. Uh, but I, I found that, uh, like my my net cost for including the bottle and the label and the cork for uh, for making a bottle of wine is about six dollars, mm. and uh, including the grapes and, and all of that, not paying myself for the effort. But I can't buy a, a bottle of wine for thirty dollars. It's even close to as good as they are. And, uh, but for you, you recognize that there's a difference between being drunk and being and and drinking alcohol. Clearly, and for a lot of people, they, they there's no line. You know, if they drink, they're drunk. Clearly. You know, and it's, it is a dangerous or thing for a lot of people, if, but if, some people can do it. Some people, when they start drinking, they don't stop. They and, just don't uh, stop. And uh, and I, praise the Lord, I can stop. And uh, Yeah. And uh, it's not that I uh, that I haven't abused it. I have, and uh, and I may abuse it in the future, but it's not my intent at this, at this point. And you have people in your life to say, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got neighbors clamoring for a bottle is what I've got, and so, <laughs> and so I I usually make way more than I will drink myself. And it's way to give out gifts to people. And so. every year I give a couple of cases to each of my kids, yeah. and and uh, and we we are passing out bottles all the time. I gave one away yesterday. And, oh, fun! Uh, so people enjoy getting them. All right. Well, um, is there any topic that you wished I would have asked? Oh, Brian, I'm I'm just here to answer any any questions that you have and and uh, and uh, we are are so glad that we were led to this church and uh, it was Jane Erickson that uh, that's right that, that led us here and she no longer comes and in fact we're not even in touch with her any longer but um but uh, she said you got to try our new church and and uh, and so we did and Terry and I loved her from day one and and uh, and uh, we love your preaching Brian and and uh, well, thank you. You guys are such a huge blessing to this church. You know, you're a fantastic elder. You pray for people. You've got godly wisdom. You see the world in, in from from a spiritual perspective. You know, you, you you're just you're doing your job well, and you're such a blessing to this church. Well, thank you. Um, you and Terry. So I'm so glad you're here. So thank you for joining us, and thank you for for checking us out. If you have any questions for Bob, put them in the, in the comments and uh, we'll see if we can get some of those answered. So anyways, take care. Thanks for joining me, Bob. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.